All right, Souls and Symbols episode two, we're looking at the iteration of symbolism across the Souls games, and we're doing vermin today, which is any bug, centipede, maggot, or microorganism that's tied to that category. This is topical because this video is late because I got sick with a bacterial infection, so let's go. Demon Souls started off with bugbears and stone fang and the tick enemies in Valley of Defilement, and while there's not much there in terms of metaphor or symbolism, we start to see early associations with chaos and the environment of the Great Swamp being associated with bugs and insect life. Dark Souls is when our vermin get center stage, and in the last video, Everlasting Dragons, I mentioned how the center conflict of the Dark Souls games specifically focuses on Gwyn's Age of Cinder coming to an end. Isolith and the Chaos Witches attempt to recreate the first flame. Isolith's soul reads, The witch Isolith attempted to duplicate the first flame from a soul, but instead created a distorted being of chaos and fire. Its power formed the bed of life, which would then become the source of all demons, and is more than enough to satiate the Lord Vessel. It was this attempt that twisted the very nature of her children, turning her daughters into insects. Her only son, the boss Ceaseless Discharge, had sores inflamed by lava from birth. A ring known as the Orange Charred Ring was given to him by his sisters to prevent his lava from harming him, though he dropped the ring and the centipede demon was formed, creating a visual language for corruption, a false prolonging of fire, and an attempt to avoid one's own fate or punishment. Many additional enemy designs in the Demon Ruins take the form of microorganisms, pig-encoded deities, and various bugs and worms. The player can also get infected with an egg sac and a maggot, which takes up the head slot of the player character. Dark Souls 2 is a direct continuation of Dark Souls 1's imagery and a cycle of reincarnation. We find that the Chaos Witch Isolith's bug form makes an appearance as it crawls into the eye of a boss called the Lost Sinner. Bloodborne's central conflict is a bit different than Dark Souls. As opposed to deities fearing the end of their age, scholars of Bergenworth wish to unlock the potential of Eldritch Ascension for the sake of mankind's advancement. I'd say the goals are more ambitious than the ones made out of fear. In the Bloodboard setting, there is an ancient civilization known as the Thumerians, or I'm going to call them Numerians, it's just easier for my speech impediment. <laughs> Their culture is centered around protecting tombs and ancient gods. Amidst the decay and stagnation of cold blood in these tombs, a variety of parasites and vermin were discovered that allowed each Numerian society to develop their own distinct practices and issues. Lauren specifically was plagued with the Beast Scourge and the Ashen Blood Disease. Based on the lore centered around the Madras twins, the blood communion of the church, and the blood-starved and bloodletting beasts, it is often spread through excessive consumption of blood or infected dead bodies. We can find maggots at sites associated with the Scourge, the Nightmare Frontier, Castle Kanehurst, below Yosefka, is that her name? Yosefka's clinic? <laughs> and a few other locations. But an important visual motif here is that those who are infected have worms growing in their body, with the bloodletting beast completely missing its head in favor of a maggot piloting its meat suit. The first instance in which we see this motif of false immortality. While the body remains in motion, the mind isn't truly their own. Queen Annalise's immortality seems to be a unique happenstance, though she seems to specifically consume blood dregs. So she may birth the child of blood, which is wild because the blood drag item definitely looks like sperm, but also has the moon presence face. So do with that what you will. It might be different from the consumption of vermin, but she consumes blood all the same. Also, sidebar, Vermin is hunted down by a group called The League, and I have a ton of thoughts about them that deserve their own video, so I'm just going to continue and move on from them, but Vermin are in the game as an item that you can get if you are a part of The League, though it is kind of like up to interpretation whether or not the Vermin actually exist, and since we're in a dream or in a nightmare, we might be seeing the paranoia or the anxieties of a particular group. So that's up for debate, and I want to discuss that in a different video. Let's keep going. <laughs> so in Sekiro, we have the immortal monks who are attempting to achieve the same results as the immortal dragon heritage through their own means. In the same vein that we just discussed through Bloodborne, it's through the consumption of parasites. An ape known as the guardian ape is also infected by the same parasite as we get to see it after extracting the parasite from its neck after phase two, harkening back to the bloodletting beast and the maggot head from Dark Souls 1. In Elden Ring, the centipede half-mark is used to kill Godwin, the first dead of the demigods. Queen Marika sealed away the rune of dust and death, and 
It's through the half mark curse that Ronnie is able to kill his soul, severing his spiritual ties with immortality. In order to do this, she has to mark her own physical body with the mark, sacrificing her own body in the process. Pests are also used by Gowrie to achieve a false immortality, as he possesses a new one every time you kill one. A clever flip on the bugs piloting us, now Gowrie is piloting the bugs, which is pretty cool. So bugs, vermin, they're associated with false immortality, escaping fate, corruption, sin, and this idea of spiritual and bodily division. So yeah, thank you for coming to this one. Sorry if this one is going to be a bit scrappy or lazy. Um, I'm still recovering and I have to film two videos this week to try to make up for lost time. So thank you all. Goodbye.